Okay, hey everybody, I'm here with uh, a friend of mine. His name is Dwayne Golden, and Dwayne has been involved in you know, online marketing. He's been involved in home business marketing. He's been involved in various business on the corporate side, and he's kind of taken this and moved into a cryptocurrency. He's he's uh, he's involved with a company of his own called CoinLogic. Um, Dwayne, just for people who don't know you. Just tell them a little bit about CoinLogic and, and what it's about. Uh, well, CoinLogic is a company that um, is we're using to help the uptake of the understanding of the world better about uh, the future of our world and how currency, um, the need for it being digital um, is essential. And then also, um, why uh, the entire concept of blockchain technology and Bitcoin and the different altcoins are here to stay. You know, I know personally, one of the things that y your personal experience with this, right, is you looked at this a little differently than maybe people who are getting started um, in, in, in seeing this, as you said, in the news or seeing this, you know, in the first time through social media. You started by accumulating, and, and I want you to talk a little bit about the, I, I guess, the, the, the way of looking at, you know, this whole idea of cryptocurrency is taking it and accumulating it versus getting into it by buying it and investing it. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, man, because, you know, the most common way, based on what you see in the news, based on the new trading of Bitcoin futures and the Chicago Mercantile what you find out is most people, because their information is coming from those those sources I told you about earlier, most people say, okay, how do I invest? Where do I invest? I mean, we've everybody thinking that they're going to be an investor. And um, there, there, are, there are basically three ways to uh, generate Bitcoin, um, for example. And um, there's good ways and there's, there's ways that just aren't that smart, and there's some ways that are just extremely expensive. Well, <clears throat> the way that everybody loves to get to get Bitcoin is to to buy it. That's the literally the worst way to get it. Buying it, but whether you call it investment or whatever else, it doesn't just. It's the worst way to get it. Um, when I got involved with cryptocurrency, I I wanted to make sure I could create a way that it would that I could generate it. You know, especially since it's not much of the world didn't have any yet, so it should be pretty easy to use that as a currency I choose to receive. So um, I did not want to buy it. And then the second way that's, that is, is challenging is to mine it. You can mine your own Bitcoin. And to do that would, you know, it would take literally more than a million dollars a month worth of electricity, let alone the supercomputer hardware right. required for you to do it. The average person's not gonna be able to do that either. So I derived it the best way to to get it would be to guess what sell something and in return sell a product or a service and in return have them pay in bitcoin if they don't have bitcoin you have to show them where they can go buy it but do not accept cash now one of the valuable things that i've, I've done in in doing this in creating uh, uh creating things for my clients uh software systems and things of that sort i only accepted bitcoin and so what that led to was the generation of thousands of Bitcoin instead of accepting the typical money. Now, what's great about this is when I started this stuff, you know, a Bitcoin was just crossing a thousand dollars. So if someone if someone purchased things from me and they they it, they did it in Bitcoin, whatever they did a year ago, it's worth ten times now. Right. So imagine that. Imagine you you generating ten Bitcoin. Right, and then you just forget it's there. But imagine generating five hundred or a thousand or two thousand. Imagine generating that kind of Bitcoin when most people didn't, when it didn't have its value, and because you saw where it's going, right? You were able to, through stewardship, find ways to channel that to create um, stronger business, ongoing wealth, cross global boundaries, and that's kind of the picture that I like to paint. I think people need to know it. If there's a way you can generate it, it doesn't matter if you're if you're gonna sell something for five dollars, it doesn't matter. Tell someone, guess what? Go go to Coinbase, go somewhere and get Bitcoin and send me that. 
because where Bitcoin's going, it's not it's not at its peak yet of where it's going, where its value is going to be. So sell stuff for ten dollars, twenty dollars, one hundred dollars. I did last year. We turned everything into Bitcoin. Whatever you want to pay me, you're going to pay. We don't mind doing the work for you, but you're going to pay us in Bitcoin. And it was um, truly enlightening, and it superseded anything that I would have imagined it could have, as far as uh, the amount of value in um, assets built as a result. So somebody's already in business. Let's say they, you know, let's say they're freelancing. Let's say they sell stuff online, or even if they sell stuff in brick and mortar, they can literally say to people, right, uh, this cost twenty five dollars. You can pay me. You, you can pay me by PayPal, or you can also pay me in cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. I actually say the opposite. I wouldn't say PayPal. I wouldn't say cash. I would say you pay me in Bitcoin. For example, um, I've been looking at some uh, large salons, hair salons. I've seen, looked at some garages. I actually own a car dealership where we accept Bitcoin. So one of the ways to make that easier is one of the reasons we, by using these ATM machines, if there's an AP, put an ATM machine in your vicinity, so if someone has to pay you, whether it's a hair salon, oil change, whatever it is that a person does, have them pay you in something that's going to grow, right? By the end of the next, so the last 12 months, Bitcoin grew 10 to 12 percent. I mean, 10, 100, it grew what, 10 times its value, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Greater than 10 times its value. It's expected to go up to about seven times its value by the end of this year. So some people believe that by buying a house, they're going to get a lot of value. They will, but it's not going to grow to seven times, 10 times its value in one year. It's not even going to do it in many cases in 10 years. So the idea of not being aggressive with it is foolish. You can buy a car, it's going to lose its value. Most of what people think that they're investing, I'm going to invest in real estate property, I'm going to buy apartments, that's fine. The likelihood for it to go 10 times or more than that in, per 12 months is not likely. So I take that scenario and talk about the growth of different types of cryptocurrency. Um, for example, Ripple's doing a lot of things this year. When I started buying that, it was about between 16 and 21 cents each. Now it's roughly a dollar, but it's expected to be anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars, you know, over the next 12 to 18 months because of Western Union partnerships, the talk of Google, using it for Google Pay. It's going to it's grow. So to invest into many things outside of cryptocurrency, for me, is I'm not doing it. I'm putting it where I, I watch the trends and we put it there. And I don't want to buy Bitcoin. I don't want to buy any of these things. I want to generate it. Someone wants to pay me, guess what you pay me. One of the things that we do at CoinLogic, Charles, is we provide these point of sale machines. So if someone wants to pay you, you get one of our get one of our point of sale machines. Then you make them pay you in, in the currency you want. That way you can build your fortunes. No, exactly. I have seen, go ahead, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. And I mean and again, I mean, you did this, you did this first. So 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 somebody could, I mean, not just theoretically, they could start I mean, almost, uh, you know, t tomorrow, whatever they're doing in business right now, online, offline, they can then just start saying, they can either say, um, as you said, <laughs> um, you can no longer pay me in dollars, you can pay me in Bitcoin, or at minimum, they can just start taking Bitcoin right alongside of what they're doing. Ah, uh, uh, yes, of course, yes. Anyone who did it a year ago is not only not elated that they did it, but they will have, they have zero regrets, zero. Now, it doesn't matter to me if all you took in was $1,000 a year ago worth of Bitcoin. Now you have 10,000 sitting. You're not gonna do that in a CD, an IRA. Excuse me. You're not gonna do it in anything else. So the real, the real question is, you know, um, People have to ask themselves, why are, why are, if it, Bitcoin's that good, even if, when it's, it's at its low right now, it's high with like $20,000, it's low as at 10000 if it's like that, why are they saying so many fearful negative things? You do your own, you can answer your own questions on that. Right. Right? 
We have so-called so-called millionaires and billionaires. Oh, it's a bubble. They were saying that when it was worth 2000 3000 They keep saying it, but trust me, they're buying it. They have it themselves. And, and so what everyone has to do is start evaluating things. What would they do, right, if someone starts spreading rumors about their best friend? Are they really going to listen to all of them? Are they going to check it out for themselves? I, inquire, I, I encourage people to check this out for themselves. There, and go look at your wallet, open it up. Is any of those dollars in your wallet worth a, a lot more? Are they worth five, ten times more by the end of the year? The answer is no. The answer is absolutely not. Yeah, and see, so, what, what, when, when, this, when, this, um, when this happens, one of the questions I've heard is, okay, if I have this, right, where am I, <laughs> where am I going to spend it? And I know you have you have some specific you know sort of guidance on if, if i let, let's say i accumulate i, I accumulate you know three thousand four thousand dollars in bitcoin and i wanna i want to spend some of it let's say i don't want to i don't want to invest it all or i don't want to i don't want it to grow anymore i do need to spend some what 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 could i do first of all to uh, to, to buy some things that I need. Second of all, what could I do if I needed to turn it into something so that I can pay something that I need to pay? Well, there's some, there's many options for that, right? There's different brokerage firms um, that will actually broker it. And um, but there's online ones. If you're just talking about a few hundred dollars, you can do that at Coinbase. If you have an account at a place called Uphold, right? They let you withdraw 10,000, up to 10,000 a day. And so, I don't know that there's a major issue there. But then again, depends on what city you live and what part of the world, you can go to a Bitcoin ATM machine and withdraw some, like a regular ATM. So I know a lot of people scream scare tactic that you're going to still have all this Bitcoin and not be able to pay your own bills. Uh, but I'm going to tell you, if I, would have, if I would have had the insight and the knowledge about how powerful this was in 2009 and 10 when it started, it would be a no-brainer, but I don't have any excuse now not to act on it. And so uh, my introduction was 2016. I had a client come and was explaining how Bitcoin was going to cross $700. And he asked if we can create some uh, uh, technology so that he can be again accept Bitcoin and pay his, pay his people and pay Bitcoin. So we, we went dug deep and really just studied it and started you know, training our team in blockchain technology. And then we created it by the uh, beginning of the year or the end of the end of 2016, we created it. And then we had, when we started getting another customer, we need the same thing. Well, that was no brainer for us. Once we figured, once we learned it, once we trained our team in blockchain technology, um, we were able to create it for many companies and everybody paid us in, in, in Bitcoin. And, and, and really this is something that, uh, that, that, anybody can do if they if, if they sort of if they, if they get some basic understanding of what uh of what to do and put in the system is because they're already they're already out there right i know your company does it um they can get oh them. yeah it's already out there you don't have to become a blockchain technologist these days you just gotta like be you know put your put your put your head together you know um get your head together turn off the tv for a while and say okay yeah if i got a website out there that sells widgets no problem. I'm going to put a widget button on there that, it, that will collect to collect the payment in Bitcoin. Boom, done. So now create your own wallet, and it's it's really not that difficult. The idea is most people don't have the courage to do it. They're thinking, what if some, what if people will pay me? You have the highest expectations that they will, and they will. So they can, here's what I accept. It's not hard. Here's where you can go get the Bitcoin to pay me. You don't buy it yourself. You can, it just is not smart. Why not generate it? it? Just to me, why take the money that you use to pay your bills and take care of your livelihood and, and buy Bitcoin when you can just create and leverage what the value that you have and exchange that value for Bitcoin? That's my model. Yeah, because the benefit of that is you, you continue to still be the best at what you're doing. You're just going to get paid in a different currency. Yes. So if you own a car wash, keep owning it. Don't let it, don't let it stop you. If you have a restaurant, you know, uh, no problem. Give an option because you know what? A lot of us people that have it, we do ask that. You said Bitcoin? Last year, here's something for you. Last year, here's one of the reasons why I decided to, to buy a car lot, a car dealership. Um, I had a couple clients 
who wanted to buy high-end cars, but they were Bitcoin rich and cash poor. What that means is they were smart enough to not try to collect a lot of dollars, they collected a lot of Bitcoin, right? Thousands. <laughs> so when they want to buy a car, high-end car, um, they go to a dealership and dealerships, we don't know how to accept it. How can we accept it? We don't know. And I'm like, oh, we would love to if we could, if it's gonna give, if it's gonna give us the money. <clears throat> so I said to myself, oh, oh my goodness, wow. Okay, so I used a brokerage firm to cash the person's Bitcoin so they can buy their car, right? Beautiful, high-end uh, car, Rolls Royce. We're talking um, Bentleys, we're talking about um, just different types of high-end cars. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, well, wait a minute, what am I thinking? Why am I doing this? I should just find a car dealership that's in a good place, good location, and then create the option to accept Bitcoin. And so by doing that, it's I'm like, I never have to refer people somewhere else. I could do it myself. And so I just realized, I Googled, I used the internet to try and track down any car. There were two websites and neither, neither one existed anymore when, when, when I went to the place. So I had to fly my client into Miami for the car that he wanted, but there was nothing around where they, people accepted it. So that made me create this. So th right now where the world is, it's in its infancy stages. It's not hard to find that no one, no one else offers it. <clears throat> so I believe what I see um, as the Pepsi Cola company just recently um, opened their doors to accept Bitcoin for like, uh, what's that stuff called? For KFC and, and uh, others in, in Canada. And then we'll, we'll go through other co countries as the year moves on and McDonald's announced they're going to accept it. I realize it's, it's where the world's going. I got to get there first. So then we started manufacturing our point of sale machines and our pick on ATM machine. So when the company says they want to accept it, they can come right to coin logic and we'll provide it or through some of our sales representatives it do it. They can find, they can get the ability to, to accept them. So that's, that was my thinking. Now, we also, <clears throat> we have our own system called our, our do it pay system, which is similar to PayPal, but it's for, it's for Bitcoin. So a person can literally put the link, take the coding from our site and put it into their web page, and it'll, they can accept Bitcoin there. So that's, it's, just, it's, 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 it's not that difficult. And I know, I know that there are many who will listen to this and do something about it and make sure they're, they will not let another day go by where they're behind the eight ball. Instead, they're going to get in front of it. Yeah, that's fantastic because, and, and I guess, you know, kind of in closing, you know, the, there are people out there, and, and this is really the other side of this, right? There are people out there with cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, and they want to spend it, and, and they're looking, you know, probably for some of the same things that, you know, people are looking for with dollars, and if people were, had stuff available to sell, they'd buy it. Absolutely. You know, I, I, read, I was looking at Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks. He says the next season, next next season, they're accepting Bitcoin. Now, this is the same guy, no less than a year year ago or so, said, oh, no, it's yeah. a bubble. I don't believe in it. It's not going anywhere. Right. Right? right? Now he's a big champion of Bitcoin and Bitcoin futures. See, <clears throat> it doesn't take much for people to to put something down because they don't understand it. But when they see that it's gonna keep progressing and moving forward without them, they can't help but get on board. So I'm saying that the sooner people get involved, the better. If you wait, if you wait until the government is gonna to mandate to you how to do it, you can forget it. You will stay under the foot, under the rim, and you can literally create your own, I believe, individuals can create a different quality of life for their families. They can have a much greater uh, opportunity to live their purpose and not worry about retiring um, and then going to greet people at Walmart or taking orders at Wendy's after they retire. I believe there's an option for them to truly be able to have a better quality of life as they progress towards older years if they get involved now. They, see, at the turn of the century, this is not uncommon. I mean, the Rockefeller wealth was built at a time when the world was in its change. As the world changed, think of this, the time when the world 
began, when the printing press was invented, it changed things. People said, no, who's going to need that stuff? We have our scrolls, you know. We, we have our methods. We pass things down through stories. Who's going to need the printing press? Right, yeah. This stuff called reading, I don't know, it doesn't make sense, this, this print. Same thing happened with the introduction of radio and television. When the internet came out, nobody believed in it, Charles. I'm going to tell you something. In the 1980s, it was all DOS. Said, That's just dumb. Why do you mean, when you can watch the news, why would you go online to get the weather or the stats from the game? This is 1987, when I, 97, 87, 98. Then Bill Gates says he believes the future is that every home will have its own personal computer. And people thought he was nuts. He said, why would anybody, why would anybody do that? Everyone who waited is now out of business. All these companies uh, from, uh, I mean, I, I think of a lot of them, but, you know, Montgomery Wards, Sears, Kmart was at the top of their game, but they were last to get involved in technology. Now they are at the bottom and they are uh, on life support along with Sears and Robot. Right, right, yeah. All these companies that would not transition over to where the world was gone is behind. Individuals now, We've seen it. We've seen what happens when all the major car manufacturers move overseas just so they can stay alive. And then all these people are out of work. For individuals to wait, it doesn't make sense. There are thousands, thousands of businesses who are gone who waited too long. When we, Charles, in the 1980s, there was, there was a company called Smith & Corona. Yep. They were the leading typewriter company. They should have been the first involved with computers. They don't exist now. There are so many different companies that have just eliminated. Man, Xerox was big, right? But unfortunately, where copies and things went, it went from computing and online computing, then cloud computing. Mm -hmm. they, they couldn't keep up. Kodak went out of business and tried to come back now by creating an ICO and getting some things with cryptocurrency, but they were gone because... The mobile phone advanced so much, and they should have been the leader of it. The mobile phone had better cameras and faster processes than Polaroid and, K and Kodak. So for us individuals to know that something's on the, on the cutting edge, and we let the CNN and Fox News scare us away from it so they could get there first, it's just absolutely it's just foolish. I'm sorry, you got me on a tangent, and I know you like to do that, so I'm going to back up and let you talk. <laughs> No, that's good, and that's really uh, that, that's really kind of the, the the gist of really what I wanted to get to, you know, in this in this interview. I I do want you to um, tell people where they can find out more about Coin Logic, and then what I want you to do once we get off of this call is I'd like for you to give uh, give me just some some information so I can pass on to people if they want to be able to use you said do it to you know create their own pay buttons and all the other things like that so I'm gonna provide them that information but tell them we can find a little bit more about coin logic well coin logic is our company we pretty much use for uh, corporations to assist them in moving forward fast uh, the individual we do use do it when you go do it myself that's D U I T myself.com uh, for that and um, <clears throat> so for as far as coin logic it's coinlogic.com c-o-i-n-l-o-g-i-q.com um, our goal as I told you before is to make sure people can of course be educated on what's really going on and, and then of course help them to protect and secure their um, their their inflow and outflow of whatever cryptocurrency they have that's where a lot of it's lost and you know where it's purchased and all that and then lastly to expand it makes the best way to expand it is using the type of technology that allows anyone to accept and take it no matter where they are that includes our point of sale uh equipment and um bitcoin atm machines <clears throat> that's that that's our idea but if you do it we channel we allow individuals to take up and run and be representatives and move this stuff anywhere around the world, um, wherever they live. And, um, and this starts off with, with uh, to get started with us, it's minimal. It's as little as like uh, the equivalent of 25 to $30 um, with the do it Bitcoin network, we call it, where you can get started, learn all about it, what it's about, educate yourself, prepare yourself for being able to generate Bitcoin.
generate cryptocurrency. That's what we teach. How to generate it. Don't buy it and invest. Don't, don't let someone talk to you to make you think you're going to be mining it. If you have trouble paying your own electric bill, it's just a couple hundred dollars, you're not ready to mine anything, right? right. So we like to like, be real and teach people exactly what must take place. No, that's awesome. So everybody, um, once you uh, once you get off the call, head over to CoinLogic.com, and then uh, I'm going to after the call, I'm going to ask uh, ask Dwayne to maybe put something together so that you'll be able to find out a little bit more about uh, do it. Okay, so hey, Dwayne, uh, as always, um, you know, thank you. I appreciate it, man. The pleasure is all mine. Good, always, always a pleasure, Charles. And you need your master interview in, interviewer. You know that. <laughs> and uh, I, appreciate, I appreciate the questions and at least uh, not getting over into privacy type stuff. You're a good man. I appreciate it, bro. All right, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care.